Howdy everybody and welcome back to Melania's Arsenal, the series where we fight Melania and NG7 with every single weapon. And in this episode we'll be using the Horned Warrior Sword. Uh, and before we get into it, I'd just like to ask, if you enjoyed the content, please do leave a like, subscribe to you if you want to see more, and leave a comment if you want to help choose what's next. Uh, let's see. A curved sword of the Horned Warriors, Keepers of the Tower. The ornamental tangled horns allow the blade to serve as a medium for horn calling. Now, horn calling is a unique skill. It invokes tangled horns to cover the weapon's blade. Drive the weapon into the ground, calling, a pop, calling up a cluster of piercing horns. It is... Fine, I don't. I haven't really tried it, the weapon art. But we're gonna try it against Melania. I have a feeling it'll be treated as a projectile. It's gonna be my only issue with it. We're not gonna use it immediately. Don't worry. Uh, one thing really interesting about this weapon is it's a pair of curved swords. I was so slow on that R1, but. It has a benefit. It scales with three stats. It scales with faith, as well as strength and dex, which is really interesting because it's only physical damage. By the way, we uh, we are not managing our stamina very well. Yeah, I deserve all of this. There we go. You hit R1 there to check if she's doing the approach or not. She probably wants a waterfowl here soon. Probably. Assuming we give her the chance to. You guys ever notice that I walk in a circle whenever she does the jumping slash? It's a really weird habit that I've noticed I do. Alright, we tried. That's okay. We'll just dodge it instead. And then we're gonna try the horn calling here, see if she treats it as a projectile. She definitely does, and the worst part is she treats it from the start as a projectile. Which means it's like unusable against her. All right, lady. We apparently really upset her with trying to use that. Cause she is just going crazy. Oh, that hurts. That's just me being over aggressive is all that is. Ooh. She canceled it there. It's not that big a deal because she had to turn around. She had to pivot, but it's always really awkward when she does that due to her location. Also, she can technically fall on you, which I think does decent damage. It's really weird. We'll just roll three times, that's okay. Oh, screw that. I hate it when she does that. We're just gonna heal after the phase transition. That was a little unfortunate. Uh, why am I r one Hello? There we go. It was a little awkward. This weapon so far has been pretty good. Uh, I'm running combo damage on it, by the way. If you hadn't guessed, I rolled way too early on that. Sheesh. I rolled too early on that one too. And my kitty cat is very upset with me. Yeah, I'm not gonna let her go for she could still do Attack of the Clones here if she wants to do it and she chooses to do it. You don't really have an option, you just kind of have to deal with it. Unfortunately. Whoop. I moved my leg and I almost ripped my headphones out. There we go, she actually stood still for a second, jeez. We had to play very defensively there. And waste time. But I mean, overall, it looks like this thing is definitely succeeding. Wow, I actually got hit by that. So rare for me to get hit by that these days. Ooh, nice. Have you noticed that this thing costs a ton of stamina to swing, by the way? It is expensive stamina-wise. But beyond that, the damage itself is really good. I mean, she didn't even do Attack of the Clones this time. That's wonderful. All right, very good. Uh, this thing just does physical damage, so I'm just gonna go choose a boss in the DLC, and by that I mean, I'm sorry guys, I just wanna keep finding Gaius. No, you know what, I'll do the lion. Give me an easy softball with this thing, apparently. I don't know why I'm choosing the lion. If you guys haven't picked up on it, I don't, and don't dislike my video for this, or do. 
it's whatever, but I don't like Relina, actually. Which is really weird to think, because everybody praises her as like the best boss of the DLC. One of the best. I kind of can't stand her. Here, we'll try horn calling on him. I take it back. I hate this weapon art. That is not very good. I mean, I know he's not exactly the boss to use holy damage on, but still. I don't even know what's happening, honestly. Uh... That was very odd, but okay. That can hit you? Huh. The more you know, I guess. Wow, I mean... I don't even have my physic on? Hold on. Yeah, okay, I mean, when you start actually getting combo damage off on him... You're a little bit strong. All right, I guess he's a little bit weak. Is more so what it is, huh? I don't really know what you're supposed to do. I guess you just keep running it instead. Issue is like, he's not exactly dangerous, even though I'm like face tanking him, right? Like, he doesn't quite do enough damage for it to matter. I can do this, all right. I don't know, I mean, this boss, when you're actually at max blessings, but not even, I'm at 19, I guess, but pretty much ma max blessings doesn't feel nearly as scaled up as everything else. Which is a little disappointing, I guess? I don't know. It's a little odd that they put this as, like, the, the first, the easiest boss, when he's completely optional, and not only that, he's, like, he opens a shortcut that's a worthless shortcut. I don't really understand, but we beat him pretty handily too, which is neat to say the least. I put this on. I haven't even used dash attacks once. Okay, I'll go for jump attacks instead. Go. Oh, right, I tried to vow, but I was a little bit too late that time. I'm gonna say Gaius is slash resistant. Based on that. Duh, you don't even have time to get that off on him? Alright. Alright, I'm just gonna get beat up by him, I guess. There we go. I'll get blasted out of the air. That's okay. I don't think that matters because luckily you can just heal it off because you have like infinite time. All right, looks like combo damage. Very good, unsurprisingly. This is uh, not necessarily this weapon showing off. This is more so just how curve swords work, like paired curve swords, you know? They're just really good when it comes to combo damage. I'm just gonna heal anyway, even though he's gonna charge, probably. Oh, that one actually hit me. So, you know you can ride Torrent in this fight? What is the point of that? I've never seen a time where he doesn't just, like, outspeed and outperform Torrent. As you can see, you can kind of, kind of face tank him a lot as well in the DLC. Like, you gotta think, my setup for face tanking is working in NG7. And, like... I'm just kind of throwing myself at him. He's gonna charge me here for that, probably. Not the charge I was expecting, but still a charge. And he should be dead, yeah. I don't know. It was kind of interesting when you actually hit max scatter tree blessing and stuff. You're kind of super tanky to a lot of things. All right, we did two bosses in the DLC, so let's go ahead and go back to Landell. Shall we? We'll go do that. 
I don't know. This weapon's actually really good, by the way. I haven't mentioned it. The issue is, like... I don't know. Do I have something I can compare it to? These are quality, right? There's two more damage. But I don't have 64 strength. I have 40 faith. So these things are already stronger. Without the fact... Here, one second. Are they longer? Shorter? I think these are a pretty long curve sword. But... I think with proper stats, these things probably come out to being about the same. But the benefit is, like, as, like, a normal set of paired curved swords. Benefit is they're one weapon, so they don't weigh as much. On top of that, though, they scale with faith, which means out of two stats, it scales the same with strength and faith. With two stats, dex and faith, you could actually still build buffing without having to worry about your damage falling off or something, because you put 30 points into faith that don't get scaling. So that's handy. I think this weapon's good. I just... The weapon art's kind of terrible for PvE because it's a projectile. And unfortunately, I think most projectiles, as a weapon art, a lot of them kind of get cast to the wayside. Is that even a term? Right, like that was 775 damage, but if I just do a jumping R1... Oh, sad. I didn't have stamina to roll, dude. That's on me. But still. I think all curve swords, by the way, take this kind of stamina to use. I just haven't used them in a while. So I've forgotten what they take. Can you circle strafe his just like Melania's? Like, watch, he's gonna just... Well, not quite. He just cast through it instead. I might still die to him, my goodness. Well, that was bad. Man, I find this fight annoying. You think I should maybe just take this fight out? And just, like, do Godfrey instead? Godfrey and... Wow! Okay. Godfrey and Radagon, because I might just do that, honestly. I'm dead. I'm not dead. I live, dude. You can't t get rid of me that easily. Except I hit the weapon art. <laughs> I should have died for that. He was supposed to cast twice. Just knowing his AI, typically he would. So I got very lucky that he didn't. Oh well, though. Oh god. At least you beat him. We had to use 11 flasks to kill Gideon with this weapon. Now, I think that comes down to the fact that... Well, me playing poorly. I know how karmic justice works. I have no idea what it's actually called in this game. Retaliation, something like that. And I just didn't respect it twice. I really think when it comes to building, uh, I mean, you don't have to build tanky, but I think building tanky gives you way more leeway in this game. So putting on the Dragon Crest Great Shield, Dragon Crest, yeah, Great Shield Talisman, and the Crimson Seed plus one helps a ton, by the way. Like you're talking, your effective HP goes up by 20% with this. The biggest HP boost in the game, right? Because you may as well compare it to the same as this. Even if you look at percentages, like it's still uh, multiplicative, other, like other things. And then this one gives you way more effective HP out of your flasks. Turning every third flask, you or every three flasks into effectively four. If that makes any sense. I'm probably wording this the weirdest way possible, but I know what I mean. Oh, I was just thinking about it. One thing that this thing has to compete with, though which isn't very fair to it, is the fact that, like, a lot of curve swords have bleed or can be made to have bleed. I did that way too early, but it didn't. Never punish, dude. All right, 
sometimes punished. But that's okay. I'll do it. I'm not afraid. Are you seeing how much this is chunking him, by the way? I'll do it again. I'm still not afraid. Alright, I should have been afraid. I take it back. No, I lived. He's probably going to phase transition, right? Yeah. Doesn't even matter. It's about as efficient as you can get with killing him, honestly. This thing's pretty good still. Like, if you have a boss where you can use the jump attack efficiently and effectively, it's really good there. Who would have guessed? But, like, a lot of bosses you can't. Well, a handful of bosses you can't. Actually, a lot of them you can, honestly. Just shh, don't tell people. I know, it's not that big a secret. Don't worry. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody knows that curve swords are good when paired together. Especially on the jump attacks. And I'm not even running full combo damage boosting. I wonder if you can jump over that one. I don't think you can. We'll go for another one. There we go. Alright, I mean, he, if he doesn't want to play nice, I guess he's not going to play nice. I thought he was going to go for the projectiles. Like the scattershot projectiles there. Oh, he is actually going to play nice, okay. I mean, I guess we're close enough. I never feel safe doing this dodge, honestly, guys, I'll tell you. Yeah, you have to roll, like, directly past him, not off to the side. It's, it's not a dodge I'm good at yet. You know, I kind of, like, I love the, I like a lot of the Radagon fight. His phase 2.53, whatever this is, this part's unbearable, dude. I think, a lot of the time. He can just choose for it to be a not fun. I also forgot that's something he gets in phase 2.5 as well, or whatever. He gets the ability to cancel out of his grab with a stomp. It's very silly. We're going to put on another defense buff. Not that that really matters. And then we're just going to jump attack Elden Beast. Yep. It does that much damage. Yep. Alrighty. Like, in comparison, you're talking like most weapons get like... And I even got hit by the fire. Most weapons get like two to five thousand damage off there. This one got twelve. Like, how can you compete with that? That's really good. And then we just run straight and then we hop off the horse and we do more jump attacks. I like being able to dodge that with just a roll. It feels good. I think our combo tier wore off or something. Because we're not getting as much damage. But that's... I don't know. Maybe not. If he goes for Elden Stars here. Huge. We can just kill him before he even does second rings, guys. Nice. Look at that. So, like, if there's one thing that Curve Swords excel at, it's bosses that have poise instead of knock instead of like human poise they have boss poise instead of like character poise right so millennia has a mix of both which means it's not that effective uh gideon has player poise obviously and then godfrey and elden beast have uh boss poise as you can see it kind of shreds them if you can attack between their attacks like that uh it's a very simple setup that I have. It was very effective against Elden Beast. Uh, and with that, I think we're going to call it there, obviously. I think this is a good place to end it, usually. Uh, very good weapon.
probably just as fine as other curved swords. I'm really, when it comes to a lot of these weapons, guys, I don't show them off very well. There's a lot of experimenting you guys can do. I'm giving a very shallow taste of a lot of these. Like, I didn't include any buff stacking on this in terms of, like, uh, Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, etc. And even still, it was good. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.